I'm all out of stuff to talk about, to be honest with you. So I left it to, to Neil and Tom and Haley to, to decide what we were going to talk about. Um, I suppose we may as well start with the, the King and Queen's winner, Desert Hero. This show last week, William Haggis told you if you needed any encouragement, um, he told you to back the horse effectively. And uh, Desert Hero won at, at, at big odds under under Tom Marquand. Neil, you had um, an interesting conversation this week about this with somebody in the Ascot Authority. Yeah. I've never seen anyone with as many posh badges <laughs> walking around Ascot as, as you, which was I don't uh, know interesting. how that happened, really. Yeah, I, I, I put my top hat on and people started speaking. I, and I was, I was chatting with all kinds of people. Anthony Oppenheimer, I had a long conversation with. Um, yeah, no, I spoke to someone at the Ascot Authority and I said to them, because it was quite a big thing, wasn't it, going into the meeting, whether the king was going to come every day. And there's this feeling that uh, that uh, Camilla's always been more into horse racing than Charles and uh, that he wasn't sort of so bothered about it. Uh, they said, well, obviously they couldn't say because of security reasons. They're not, you know, they're not allowed to say in advance where they're going to be. Uh, but they knew that they were coming every day. Mm. I think that was quite a big thing for racing, that they came every day. Uh, you know, uh, there was the time when the Queen was Ill, the, the, the late Queen was ill and she didn't come to Royal Ascot a few days, and they didn't come either on a couple of the days. And people were like, oh dear, you know, in the future, maybe the royal yeah. interest in racing is going to wane. Um, I think it's a, it's a pretty damn good week for racing's it, relationship it, well, with the royal family. Well, the, the interesting thing is that, Hayley, and you obviously you rode for Her Late Majesty quite a bit, and, and you, you, you know that... Um, it's not a state occasion. They don't have to be there. No. But they've kind of made it a bit of a kind of semi-state occasion by being there every day. Yeah. What I liked is that they both went, but they both looked like they really enjoyed it as well. Oh. Like, I just thought that, you know, they, they, yeah. they looked like they were buzzing off it. Well, this per, this well if you have a winner, it always this, helps, doesn't well, that, it? That, yeah, that, but, but even but before that, was the that, thing. that, that I thought, was the thing. That's yeah. what this person said to me. They said yeah. there was a total change with him. When they had the winner, he was like, I get it now. This yeah, is good. I like this. Can yeah. we have another one? Yeah. Uh, and that, that's got to be good for racing. We're sucking him in. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose also when you're easing your way in as the monarch um, and suddenly you feel you feel warmth of the public to you mm. there, yeah, where, pe- people which hasn't been clapping. easy yeah. for him yeah, so yeah, far, for sure. he might think, well, this is actually quite, mm. quite a nice atmosphere to inhabit. Um, the the love was spread around during Ascot Week. It, Godolphin, naught for twenty six, was mm. it? Um, haven't really come to the the top table party this year, apart from modern games in the, in the Lockinge. There were a lot of um, lower profile stables represented. A lot of them doing very well. A lot of medium sized stables like Tom's, Harry Eustace, upwardly mobile trainers doing well. I mean, yeah, Tom, for you and, and from a business perspective, how important is it to have that have that Royal Ascot winner? Uh, yeah, well, hopefully it's very good, I hope, <laughs> but I'm um, looking ahead. But, uh, oh, do you know, when you get into our game, it's what you dream about, having winners on a day like a Royal Ascot. And um, and I saw, I actually saw Harry on the Gallops on Saturday morning. And I, like, it was just incredible for us, you know, growing up, being assistants together, spending all mm. the time sort of on a Friday night going to the pub or, you know, and just sort of growing up in racing together and um, to have wins like that. with you. And Ed Walker, have another winner, you know, and Julie Camacho was fantastic, wasn't it? And there's been a, it's, just, it's been brilliant, I think. The whole week's had a fantastic feel to it. And, um, yeah, no, hopefully we just have to have another one now. I think I'll... I'll <laughs> That's it. You just want more, do I remember I talked to a jumps trainer here one time when I was here and... Uh, I said to him, is that just a cliche when they say, oh, you know, you have a big winner on TV and the phone's buzzing? And he said, yeah, it's a load of rubbish. Like, never have I had, like, a big Saturday winner and immediately on Sunday someone said, right, there's ten horses or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how much of it is the business and how much of it is just having a brilliant day and, and you know, like something you'll remember all your life? You tr- you're tr- you really are trying to prove yourself. You know, you start at the bottom, you work mm. your way up, you, you know, you rent a yard and you sort of get half a dozen horses together mm. and you try and climb the ladder. And... Um, to knock off sort of, you know, a group two at Royal Ascot, mm. it's great for us because it just proves, you know, you can hope to do an OK job mm. to hopefully big owner and big owner breeders. And I suppose that's uh, people like to try and attract. And so when it comes around to yearling sales or whatever, you just hope that you can, um, you know, tempt one or two of them to sort of send things your way if you can. And, uh, yeah. It's mm. right, Rishi, Rishi Prasad sure. will be on the phone any moment. He'll have three or four more. Don't worry about that. So. Go on, Amy. Uh, horses cost a lot of money, mm. so if you're putting it in someone's care, you want to know that they can do the job, not just guess that they might be able to. So 
you know, it just helps us yeah. big just, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I think that was one of the, the features of the week, clearly. There was a, an yeah. awful lot of human stories and uh, an awful lot of people were amongst the winners. Uh, no, go on, you can, you can start your right, annual, got, you can start I'm, your I'm, annual rant. I've go on, off you go. Ten minutes worth, I can say about it. Look, <laughs> off you go. Okay, so Chris Stickles was on TV early in the week saying, we don't water to advantage any one trainer or disadvantage another. Well, that's clearly not true, because at the end of the day, if you water, it's going to advantage people that want softer ground and disadvantage people Yes, but you know what he, you're being obtuse. Ground. You know no, what he I'm meant. Not, I'm not being obtuse. What he meant was, no, I don't water at anybody's behest. I'm I watering to try and create that, a fair playing I understand that, but we don't know what conversations are having, he's having in the background. And if, the, you know, if you go into a meeting in the middle of a heat wave with a hose pipe man and you get good to soft ground... Uh, and some people, like, like for example, Wesley Ward, you know, want fast ground for their horses. And then other people, there were winners this week that, you know, the trainers have said in the past he needs a bit of cut in the ground. And, you know, they want to race at Royal Ascot. They were clearly, they were clearly advantaged and other people were clearly disadvantaged. And this, you know, we don't know the motive for why it happens. Now, Chris Stickles, if he was sitting here, would probably say, well, the motive is partly because of the whole, hang on, partly because of the whole season at Ascot. He's got, he's got to have. I got fined last week. For no, but he's, he's got the whole, you know, the ground has got to be good for the rest of the season. He's, he doesn't want it to be churned up or whatever, you know. I understand all that. But some people, a lot of people on Twitter are saying, well, this is, this is not good. Given that racing gets its funding from the losses of punters, throwing yeah. the form book out of the window because you've had all the preparation races into Royal Ascot on faster ground and suddenly you're running on good to soft ground on Tuesday is very good for the levy. It's very good for bookmaker profits. It's very bad for punters and it's a bad look for racing. I accept that last point. I think it's reasonable to question the execution of, uh, of watering mm -hmm. and, and it, is, it is reasonable to question whether the communication of it at uh, well, the ground script is fine. Well, I don't think it's reasonable to question his motives. Go on. Well, I, I wasn't questioning I his motives. Here. I'm saying that as we don't we'll know what the motives are, it's, it's impossible to say. Yeah. And that, that puts him in the firing line. That makes racing potentially look very bad because lots of people were saying, you know, it, it's for the good of the bookmakers. Um, in terms of the communication, Saturday, just quickly, so on the communication, it was very poor. You know, Saturday morning, it didn't, didn't hear about the watering on the BHA website till 6.30 a.m. Uh, Ascot didn't say on their website, nothing on social I'll, media I'll share a about horse, what I'll share a they did on Friday night. I'll share call it just quickly. But okay. I'm, I'm, I want to bring Hayley in on this because you, yes. you rode on the ground every day. So how, how do you think it evolved through the week? I thought it was... Beautiful racing ground, safe for the horses, nice cover of grass, you know, good gra good good to firm, which we expected this time of year. Couldn't complain. I don't think any of the trainers had any whinging to do. I think it's just you that's got the problem. Uh, well, I definitely didn't say... I, def <laughs> I, I certainly didn't say that it wasn't safe. No, no. Uh, but the ground was described as good with good to soft patches on Tuesday. That was, yeah. that was Chris Dickles' description of it. Uh, and, and you know, got, then it the commentaries were, yeah, well, I understand that, but I mean, there was no clue coming into the meeting that we were going to run on that kind of ground. I, you know, I listened to loads of pre, pre ask a preview shows, podcasts, read loads of stuff. Everybody saying, oh yeah, you know, this horse will do well on the fast ground. There's an anti post market. People, you know, punters are entitled to expect they're going to be good to firm. I don't, and I, it was you know, good to firm. Well, it, no, it wasn't. It was good with good to soft patches on the Tuesday. It was good ground on the Wednesday. It, 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 um, I the don't second remember it, any of the jockeys saying it was on the slow side on the Tuesday. Well, the, this was this was the going description given by the clerk of the oh, course. I well, mean, then they you were know, the, yeah. Well, if, it, he's, if he's giving the wrong going description, that's a, we had a problem there as well. Did he not well. change it during the day? To no, he, the, the second it hit good to firm, he said, well, we're going to have to water because it's got to good to firm. Mm. I mean, I, I don't mind people watering to maintain good to firm, but if they're watering and changing it into soft, I think that's a problem. When there's lots of thunderstorms around, it is jolly yeah. hard to get it right. Well, yeah, but, no, no, okay, I've heard that point before. If there hadn't have been any rain on the Monday night, 
we'd have just run on good to firm on Tuesday. Well, it was no big deal. There's a whole week They've to get through. It. They've got the whole week to get through. You want you yeah, want to right. have a safe load of horses. I think. Yeah, but he can water every night if he wants to. He did anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know, he can keep bringing it back to good to firm each day. I, I wouldn't want to be a clerk of the course. It's a very tough yeah. job. Yeah, take him out. Take, Honestly. Just take one. Is it, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. It's, it's a, I promise you, it's a harder job to be a professional punter or any punter uh, you know, if you're if you're not being told, well, first of all, if you're given no information about the going, which which happened about the watering, which happened a couple of times during the week, very poor communication. I mean, all racecourses basically need to look at what uh, William Darby does at York. Brilliant communication there. They always keep you up to date on what's happening with the ground and with the watering. And Ascot could take a leaf out of their book. Oh my God, we've got to talk about the <laughs> draw <green>. bias now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Haley Turner. Was there a marked advantage on any part of the track this week, do you think? No. I think it was it varied from day to day, but not necessarily because of the ground. Because wherever the pace of the race, where the more fancied horses were drawn. Um, <clears throat> sort of the Tuesday, they were going far side. Wednesday, they were going, you know, middle to stand side. And then they were going up the middle. Um and some days it worked in your favour, some days it didn't. You know, it worked in my favour when I won on Docklands, but then I won my side of the race for David Simcock in the Holyrood House. Um, mm. So, but I actually finished ninth. So, it's just look of the draw. The one thing I noticed this year was that, unlike in some years, there wasn't like a like a races where you got the there's a mass migration where everyone kind of decides that there is one mm. place you have to race. And they all shelve up and bunch on the stands rail, or all yeah. shelve up and bunch on the on the far rail. I think that happens more when there's slower ground. When right. it's softer ground, I think it makes a bigger difference. But I think with the big handicaps, horses need cover. And you know, if you're drawn on the rail, the pace is three or four horses away from you. You're going to have to go to those horses. It's it's really hard to just stay on the rail on your own because a you've got no horses to compete with, you've got no uh -huh. horses to aim at. It's just it's just how it falls. And so I think you've just answered the question that Neil was about to ask. Yeah. Oh Well, I, no, I was just going to say, well, I, I I'm still don't feel like, it, it, you know, the whole week went by and the, the going stick pretty much all the time said that the stand side was the fastest. I don't think I saw anybody run right up the stand side rail particularly. No, I... I the it, whole week. It's diff yeah, but the, the, the stalls are in the middle, so yeah. the only time they would have gone up the stand rail... It's well, in the big ones, but in the ones. Hunt Club, for example, you know, Ross yeah. is a million miles clear, but it's like the next nine horses were on the stand side. Mm -hmm. So for me, yeah. that showed that there was probably an advantage on the stand side. And yeah, but I'm, the day I'm, before they were going winning on the other uh, side. Well, the so. day before nobody came to the stand side. They, they from no the first, one ever went the stand side. Not the really on the, on Tuesday. Pretty much every race they went, they all turned right out of the stalls. Yeah, but it varied from day to day. But I, I, I just the reason they didn't go up the stand side mm. is because you need pace. You need to follow pace. If you were on a, um, perhaps you were drawn on the stand rail and you were on a front runner who likes racing on its own, maybe they'd have gone up the. Mm. But it's it's a risky business. And and also, the last two furlongs, you've got to remember what's on the left hand side of you mm. is the crowd, the stands, yep. the people leaning. You know, only not you know horses. Look I mean, I, 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 yeah, I've ridden very few it? horses in my life, uh, but yeah. I, I remember Pythagoras, and he talked about, uh, you know, oh, all that stuff. Oh, my about God, we're going to get six perfections in Russian rhythm there in the guineas again. Uh, right. Um, Come on, we can have, move on, move on. Look. I am moving on. <laughs> Hero, dude, when Neil Channing tells you to move on. The international <laughs> success this week was restricted, really, to, to Crimson Advocates. Very gritty success. Uh, on the on the head bob in the in the Queen Mary for George Weaver and John Velasquez. Aside that, the Australians were pretty disappointing. Artorias ran okay yesterday, and Wesley Ward was a was a was a complete no show, um, which is amazing, really, isn't it? When you consider just how effective those those two year olds had been previously. I think it's just a case of it's really hard to have a winner at Royal Ascot, mm. and what? How many runners? International runners were there? What fifteen ish? Mm. Something like that. So yeah. one out of fifteen is still not bad, you know. They just, you know, horses don't always run to form. There's always a reason, you know, why they've not the best horses running that day, and it, it doesn't surprise me that it was only one. It's how it is. Um, Neil, any observations as to how the the Americans 
than Australia. <laughs> well, I'm before. bound to say that Wesley Ward probably hated the ground. I mean, he had, what did he, he have? What did he have? Five runners? Not by come on, not by the time American Rascal ran the Norfolk well, States when no, they ran you're 59, out one. Did he, did 59 he have, did he whatever have, it was. Did he, did he have three? I can't remember. Did he have three on Tuesday? He had a couple on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. And he had I, fandom I mean, and Tuesday Twilight was the, the juiciest ground, on, wasn't it? He, and he probably hated the ground on Tuesday. You got, right. I mean, be fair. Australia, coming from Australia as well, it's very hard, isn't it? You're out of season there mm. and, yeah, uh, you know, getting scary. a horse rush ready to go abroad in the winter. Enjoy, I know have a nice climate, but it's a long way to come, isn't it? And sort of have your horse A1. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, about the Australians on the first, they were cannonball run, well, didn't run yesterday, reared up and they tried to run them against. So we don't know what would happen. But Cool and Gatta, I'm told she might be staying here. Oh, cool. Um, and maybe having a bash at the nun thought when they get there, they think they'll get there. Oh, wow. their ground and then maybe go to the Breeders' Cup sprint I think that's all been tied mm-hmm. in which would be quite interesting yeah, it would give the horse time to adjust as well like you said it's yeah. sort of but the, the whole the whole thing adds so much to the meeting and well done to, to George Weaver well done to Gulfstream Park as well who put on the Royal Palm Series um, to enable uh, Crimson Advocate to, to get a, a, a win in your in to, uh, to Royal Ascot uh, I don't know what you want to say about TV <laughs> coverage but I'm I'm Starting to get very nervous now. I don't think you need to get nervous. I mean, I, I think uh, I, 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 look, I didn't. I actually watched quite a lot of ITV this week. I didn't watch too much uh, Sky Sports Racing or, or Racing TV. But um, I well, didn't you wouldn't notice, have seen much Royal Ascot uh, on Racing well, TV. Well, this, this was partly my my thing because I would say among racing fans, uh, the people I speak to, most people say they prefer the punditry on Racing TV. They think overall. There are some individuals on Sky Sports Racing that they like. Uh, there are some individuals on Racing TV that they don't like. This yeah. is generally from people I hang out with. Uh, but they generally, people say, Racing TV's got the best pundits. But Racing TV has to be quiet about Royal Ascot and not say too much about it because it's on the other side. I think... We've talked about nothing else on this show for about a month. Yeah, I'm not necessarily this show, but I, I think We're Racing TV should just go for it just talk about it all day long because it's the oh, most great. important thing and i think they should preview all the races get all their best pundits on it and actually i think they should do a jeff stelling soccer saturday should have a panel of people if they're not allowed to show it have a panel of people watching the races obviously the people at home will have to quickly switch over or watch it on a stream or something when they're actually watching the race uh, and see the reaction of people watching it and talk about the races and have a show even if they're not allowed to show the pictures well, I don't know what you guys think, but I just think the game's too small for us not all to be covering the big covering the big events in some capacity, even if we don't have the rights to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, just just quickly on another thing, it would be. For, I think Tom was about. No, 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 no. I'll let you go, I'll I'll let you go, Tom. But what I was quickly going to say was for for poor old well, I'm Sky, just my for, for now. poor old Sky Sports Racing, you know, quite often they have to preview the Coventry, and all they've got is a bit of footage from a race at Wolverhampton because they, you know, all the races leading up to it were shown on racing TV. Probably Racing TV should let them show the, the you know, the, the pre-races. Well, Sorry, Tom, go on. No, no. I was going to say, I just thought it would uh, you know, be great if put on all, all the chat, you know, on Racing TV as well, but uh, I thought ITV did a good job as well, you know, to the terrestrial, you know, yeah. having, having our sport every race, on terrestrial Every race, television. every day. Yeah, yeah that's great. On network that TV. I th- yeah, I mean, you've got the racing channels for the racing... You know, aficionados, yeah. Geeks that want all the details, and then the ITV's great coverage for a non racing audience who, you know, probably don't understand yeah, even the in, basics, some, some of them. And, um, you know, they mix it up with a bit more, you know, a bit of fun and, you know, the dressing, and, you know, a bit of everything. So it's ideal, really. And you, you pop up on it from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Keep, when, when keep you know, when. Keep, keep, yeah, <laughs> keep, 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 keep your hand in. Yeah, yeah. Um, Right, let's talk about what would have happened yesterday under the new premierisation plans because it was getting congested around the country. But, you know, that wouldn't have made it any difference to, to ITV, would it? Because they, they were just showing Ascot. So I'm, I'm confused now. No, I mean, there was, there was some good racing going on outside of um, Royal Ascot. I mean, I was in a listed race in a big handicap up air that, mm-hmm. you know, probably wouldn't have been taken on board by many people. But... Um, I think it's all about Ascot, really, isn't it? Uh, mm. it? It was on on network TV. So how would it have differed then from a betting well, point I don't know, of view just, yesterday? It, it did feel like there was too much racing. There were, I think there were seven meetings on racing TV, and and obviously you know most people are just watching Royal Ascot. Um, 
It felt like quite a lot, didn't it? Something ha- I didn't catch it, but something happened at Catrick and all the racing got delayed. And then they just had clashes all afternoon and, you know, races Red cutting Cup. over each other. Uh, Redka, was it? Yeah. Sorry, I said Catrick. I knew that. It, um, nobody said it in my ear. I knew that. That's OK. I, 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 you can never get one past you. But um, I just, I don't know. Didn't they, like the, 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 I mean, Ponte Carlo's on this afternoon and that's great. But what if we, I can't remember where the other meetings are. Foslas and another jumps meeting. I mean... You know, Sunday, when I last checked for people that have jobs and stuff, is a, is a, is a day off, isn't it, when you can watch racing? They, they could have chucked one of Saturday's meetings onto Sunday, really, you'd have thought. And you focused like, you, a bit you, more on Royal Ascot. You like Sunday racing, don't you? Mm, yeah, I, I think, obviously, it's a, it's a pain for people that work in the industry because everyone likes a Sunday off mm. and spend time with their kids, but it's an entertaining sport, you know, football, cricket, everything's mm. on, on, on yeah. a Sunday. I mean, would it have hurt to put that new market meeting from yesterday, this afternoon? It's just... It wouldn't have killed the crowd the, that much, would the it? The only thing I... M- maybe it's a Sunday is, like, would people prefer to watch the football than racing, you know, or, you know, Sunday afternoon, would they... Prefer, would they would, would racing not be at the bottom of the, the pile as sports go? Mm-hmm. I think the tough thing as well is slightly is, you know, we're all... We need uh, our staff and encourage people into the industry and... The horses need to be exercised, you know, six days a week, really. And so it gives you Sunday, they might have a day off, alternate yeah. weekends. And if they work, go racing on their Sunday off. It's potentially a whole month when they don't have yeah. a day off. And you want to try and give them time off. And, I, and we all know it's sort of a fairly hands-on sort of job and a hands-on industry. I think people appreciate that. But it's quite unsustainable for the lads to have a month without a day off, I think. Well, it's not, you're not every single stable's not having a run at every Sunday. I mean, it's not like no. we've never had Sunday racing. Anyway. No. We have Sunday racing right now. No, sure, I, I understand. I just think it's getting more and more and more, and I'm not certain. I, I think you just get burnt out, and we just need more interest people into our industry. I think it'd be good if they had a day off in the week with no racing. Yeah. When people aren't interested, everyone's at work. Yeah. And then everyone can go, you know, everyone in the racing industry oh, can have a day. And actually, if you had the same day... You know, like, mm. instead of having a Sunday, we could have a Tuesday. And everyone can plan, like, even the jockeys, oh, we're going to have Tuesday off, I can get my car serviced. Yeah. You know, I can book an appointment to get my hair done and, you know, stuff like that. And everyone, but, you know, Sunday, I you know. I know exactly what you mean. I right? think that would be a great idea, but it's just getting it done and getting everyone to agree to it, isn't yeah. it? So. We also had every Tuesday off for a long time. I have now. a lot of Tuesdays off. And, and Wednesday. And Thursdays. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't shoot the messenger because the word whip has appeared on here. I don't think I'd put that on there. I think it was me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I, what happened in the last few days whip-wise, we don't know, of course, because we're not going to find out until, until next week. Yeah, I don't think there was that many... I don't think there was that many that went over. I think maybe Ocean, Ocean went over one. so He might get a little ban, but... As far as the numbers are, are concerned, six smacks seems to be working quite well. Yeah. And I actually feel like everyone's riding a bit better for it. I feel like the horses are being grabbed hold of a bit more, hunted along, and everyone's using their whip as late as possible. Yeah. I think They're I giving agree. them yeah. longer to respond. So I, I, I feel that the penalties are harsh, but... For example, when I had my first Royal Ascot winner for Charlie Fellows, I hit my horse 11 times. And I got nine days. If it was a case of not having a winner mm. and not getting the ban, I still would have gone. I still would have hit it eleven times and took mm. nine days. Whereas now, there's no way I would have took the days to have a Royal Ascot winner because it's you know it's going to yeah. be such a long time. Yeah. And I really think that's every, all the jockeys are digesting that, and it seems to be working. I think the one thing that's probably could have been changed slightly is a lot of the jockeys are getting quite harsh penalties for hitting him in the wrong place and double tapping and it's never done deliberately and I think if one of the jockeys does get pulled in for hitting the horse in the wrong place they should say look you need to go away and work on your whip action and there is an element of that built yeah. into this and don't let it happen again and if it does then give them the give them the days but give them an opportunity to sort of fix you know because everyone's been doing it for such a long time mm. you know riding the same way and 
It's just adapting to it. I worry maybe yeah. that sometimes the jockeys are feeling a bit singled out. Perhaps Clark's of the course, if they uh, <laughs> over water, should get some days off, have to miss a few meetings. Somebody else Who can do be? the job for a you while. You know what? There's, there's, uh, and there's, perhaps they get a stiff fine. There's one massive difference between being a jockey and being yeah. a clerk of the course. Sometimes as a jockey, you get praised. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. That is I, can, true. I quickly, can I quickly say, yeah. I know I did speak a lot about watering, but can somebody, I somebody contacted me for the BHA because I was ranting on Twitter about the whole thing. Yeah. And they said, actually, we think you might have made a few good points and it's part of our strategic plan and we are actually going to have a bit of a word with the class of the course about the whole watering situation. The, the best point out of all of that, mm. um, and I, I've no doubt you've made a lot of good points, but the best point I think you've made out of all of that is uh, York's example and communication. Mm. And it's very clear you have something published at the beginning of every day which has a full yeah. guide, how you've done, what watering you've done, just easy to digest. Mm. I mean, social media. I mean, they and have to no tweet one, that stuff out. No, actually, not, not, not that hard. That hard to, to do. So those were quite a long edition of this week's <laughs> Talking Points. <laughs>